Good morning and welcome to Wake Up with Marcy and Hillary, a talk show with heart. Today we have an inspiring lineup that will touch your soul and ignite your passion mm -hmm. for life. From a journey of homelessness to driving the biggest truck in the world, we have Kathy Takara, an award-winning heavy equipment operator, author, motivational speaker, philanthropist, and co-host of the empowering Women Road Warriors talk show. Joining us next is Steph Mahoney, the founder of Your Million Dollar Life. As a divine healer and master teacher, Steph helps people heal their deepest wounds, find their purpose, and live their happiest lives. Next, we delve into the depths of the afterlife with Sir James Gray Robinson, CEO of Awakening Mastery. Sir James reveals with us how his five near-death experiences have shaped his perspective on life. And lastly, we have a gift segment filled with something for everyone. A beautiful piece of jewelry made from sea glass or a memoir that spreads inspiration. There is definitely something different for that special person in your life. We will now meet award-winning heavy equipment operator, author, motivational speaker, philanthropist, and co-host of the Empowering Women Road Warriors talk show, Kathy Takara. Welcome, Kathy. Welcome, Hi. Kathy. So great to have Hi. you here. So great to have you here. Thank you, you for here. having me. Thank you. <laughs> I just got to say, you are an amazing human being. And Oh, I, I just read came, just came off of a 13 hour shift. I know, but I, I read. Shift. Yeah, <laughs> Kathy, I read your book and I tell you what you went through, the fact that you are here today and doing what you're doing. I could barely I could barely catch my breath to think about what you were going through. I mean, it was such horrific abuse. Mm -hmm. So can you share with us the journey of your past addiction and the root causes that led to it, please? Oh, my Lord. Um, in a nutshell, it's got to be. <laughs> um, I was in a foster home uh, since uh, I was a baby, like six months, and that's where the child sexual abuse started. And uh, it kind of went through all my childhood, a lot of family violence. Uh, my my only safe place as a kid was in the doghouse. Mm -hmm. And that's where I started having conversations with God, trying to figure out, you know, how could all these awful things be happening? And if you're such a loving God, how does this happen? Anyway, um, it, it kind of went on into young teen, uh, young adulthood where I was raped at 14. I was um, drugged and raped at 18 when I started modeling in New York, in New York and Miami. And I was gang raped at 19. And I had three suicide wow. attempts uh, back to back in, in the space of a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And I just I couldn't seem to. Um, I couldn't seem to get it right. I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. I couldn't talk about it. I, my mom was an alcoholic. Both my sisters were in addiction. And so here I am, you know, the baby of the family, just trying to, to, to find and my so way. How were you trying to find your way? How were you coping? How were you managing well, life? See, that's the whole thing. I wasn't. <laughs> yeah. So what I did is um, I just pretend I put everything in that vault that, that we carry inside. Mm -hmm. And I just pretended like it never happened. And mm. instead, I went and got my nursing uh, a career, and I was a nurse for 13 years. And it was so much easier for me to take care of everybody else <laughs> rather yeah, than look right. at myself. <laughs> and so, so Kathy, Kathy, yeah. what actually at that point, you're a nurse, what inspired you to all of a sudden go down the path of recovery? Because you said that there was a moment oh, when you knew you yeah. had to change your life. <laughs> Um, you can only withhold things so long, right? So uh, swallowing, swallowing, swallowing. When I when I finally turned 40, I had 10 patients to take care of. And I'm looking at my patient list one day and I had seven and a half years of domestic violence. I mean, I was strangled three times to the point of losing consciousness, like threatened to, to be sold into human trafficking, all these, these horrible things. And that day I'm looking at my patient list and I was done. I, I just, I couldn't see the paper. I couldn't, I couldn't understand. And my brain just shut down and I just quit. And so I went from the nursing unit down to the psychiatric unit and hoping they would admit me, but they wouldn't. And that was the beginning of my whole 
recovery. I ended up losing my nursing career. I uh, was drunk and homeless on the street, standing beside a guy named Toothless Joe. <laughs> a yes, Toothless Joe. Yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, on the seventh day of being homeless, he slaps me on the back and he's like, this is the life, you know, live it, love it. Embrace and it. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. When he what? did that, that was my moment. Yeah. That was my... Toothless Joe. Toothless, Toothless Joe. Toothless Joe ended up being... Yeah, I'm I mean, like, it's amazing sure? how God speaks through others around us. Yeah. And then we actually feel and, and know that we have to make a change from somebody else's words. Because you could have been like, yeah, this is it. You know, this is what, I, what I'm going to do. But you said no. Right, there's something in no. you. Like the, so the, the line stops here. <laughs> exactly. You're like, no, this isn't my life and I'm not embracing it. So let's talk about walking us through your career transition i mean you now are driving big trucks i mean you went from overcoming addiction to becoming yeah. a successful heavy equipment operator like what does that how even did, mean how did that happen right and and like Hillary had mentioned earlier you were sharing with us you just came off a 13-hour shift there in canada overnight so tell us how that happened well, I knew I couldn't go back to nursing. So how do you change careers uh, at the age of 42? I mean, I didn't know what I liked, didn't like. So I went to a career planning workshop to find out what I wanted to be when I grew up at 42. Mm -hmm. And I did a three-day aptitude test, personality test. And the lady gives me my sheet back. And in big letters, it says, heavy equipment operator. Wow. Oh, my God. I laughed so hard. I just about <laughs> fell off my chair. I'm like, you've yeah. got to be joking. I'm 42. I'm a woman. I don't even like equipment. I'm not mechanically inclined. And you know what? That's a man's job, honest to God. So I gave her back the sheet and I said, your test is wrong. And she goes like this. If only you'd believe in yourself a little bit, Missy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. So, so let me ask you, where are you right now in terms am, of your career? Wait, you're, I know where you are right now in Alberta, Canada, but I want to know where you are with your recovery and what you're currently looking towards in terms of your career. I am, uh, I'm in, um, I'm a 12 years sober. My book, Dream Big, it's in four languages. Uh, mm. This is the truck that I drive for people. I don't just drive a 18 wheeler. This is me standing beside the wheel there. Um, I operate the biggest grader, the biggest dozer in the world. It's bigger than a double car garage, uh, the biggest water truck. E everything is big. It's um, incredible. I'm a I'm a co-host for a radio show. Uh, we just won an award for the most, uh, the number one positive change podcast talk show. And um, I wrote a children's book. I'm um, I'm accepting an award in March, actually in two weeks in Vegas for outstanding leadership and uh, education. So I'm pretty uh, proud about that. I, um, I I do a lot of vo volunteer work with charities, with women in shelters, youth in schools, juveniles um, in, in in recovery. I talk about um, having a voice, not keeping secrets, mm. being that change, pressing charges. Oh my God, do you yeah. please press charges? This is this is the beauty of recovery and sobriety. These yeah. gifts that are being given to you. And, and yeah. with your story, I mean, read her book, please. It's absolutely amazing. And you help people through their difficult times. And one of the things that I love is you talk about despair and how to get through that. We don't hear that a lot, the despair. We talk about the hope, but there's so much in your book and, and so heart-wrenching, but then it's so amazing and beautiful at the end just to see where you are today and such an inspiration. So thank you so yeah, much for coming take, on Wake Up. You take the ordinary and make it extraordinary. Thank you Ooh, so much. I like it. <laughs> we love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. After the break, we meet Steph Mahoney, the founder of Your Million Dollar Life, divine healer and master teacher. And CEO of Awakening Mastery, Sir James Gray Robinson will share with us his five near-death experiences. And lastly, we share an amazing array of gifts for that special person in your life or for yourself. Mm. We're sitting down with Steph Mahoney. She is the founder of Your Million Dollar Life. 
As a divine healer and master teacher, she heals people's deepest wounds so that they can step into their purpose, live their highest timeline of their destiny, and become the happiest person they know. Welcome, Steph. Well, Steph, I love that. This is a lot that we're going to package here. To know that we can be the happiest person. It, it, all, that for you ourselves, can be for yourself, which is the in, key. In our yes. lives, I love yes. that. Yes. So great to have you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. So Steph, how do we actually find out what our purpose is? Your purpose is something that you're born with. It's a larger purpose of the reason why you've chosen to come into this world at this time. And a lot of the times it shows up through our interests, our passions, the things that we can't stop reading about. And it may not make sense to the outside world, but for us, it, there's this inner fire that magnetizes us towards something. And many times throughout our life, it reveals itself layer by layer by layer. So it'll show itself as one small dream behind a bigger dream behind a bigger dream. And as long as we take little tiny baby steps of action, that purpose is going to be revealed to us. And all we need to do is say yes to these little breadcrumbs of mm -hmm. life that present us. Sometimes they're big unicorns that present themselves. And we're like, yes, this sounds amazing. I'm gonna jump on it. But most times they're just little breadcrumbs and opportunities that we feel nudged to do. And as soon as we feel the nudge, we gotta say yes, because that's gonna align us to our purpose and allow us to um, step into this place where we begin to fulfill what we're meant to Pay do. Pay attention to it. Pay yeah, attention. absolutely. That's exactly. Thing, these little seeds, right, that yes. are planted. Now, I just want to ask you because a lot of people, they turn against mm -hmm. what they they actually want to do because of outside noise, yes. whether it's from their family or friends, you can't yes. do it, or there's fear because you know we're told we can't do it. So how can we push through that to know that we're actually supposed to you know move through that instead of trying to be perfect for somebody else. I know and you completely nailed it Mercy because Many times we have this fear of unworthiness and insecurity and we're raised by a family that has another dream for us or a society that believes we should be doing something else because the dream we have in our heart may not be as perfect as something else that's more mainstream. So the first step is taking the first step and realizing that fulfilling somebody else's dream for your life is not going to be the, um, the token that gives you happiness because mm -hmm. otherwise it's gonna be the illusion of happiness that we show to the world and that's what toxic positivity is, right? We're pretending we're happy, we're pretending we have these bright shiny smiles, we're scrolling on everyone else's Instagram screens and we're like, oh my toxic gosh, my life, positivity. my life sucks yeah. compared to everybody else. So I need to make my life perfect so mm -hmm. I can match their perfect life. Mm. But it doesn't exist. No, it so doesn't. if we can just take our power back and realize that all we're all perfect for what we've been chosen to do in this world, there's no better than or less than. Mm -hmm. And our gifts are tied to our purpose. So if we can just acknowledge that with good intentions, maybe somebody has been pursuing us to go into a different direction mm -hmm. and that's okay. And they've done this because they're showing us what they knew to do. You talk about alignment. Mm -hmm. How does one stay in alignment? Alignment means that you're fulfilling your own path, that you've decided we get to choose who we want to be in this world and we get to choose to live that way on purpose. So stepping into alignment means that you are now in the direction of following your own path, nobody else's path for you. So that is pursuing your own interests. And sometimes it's making really hard decisions, mm -hmm. right? And those are the things that um, might be hard conversations or relocating to a new place, or perhaps removing ourselves from a circle of really toxic people. But when we're able to face that 
we'll always know it's the right choice for us if that gives us inner peace. And that sounds like pivoting into a place yes. that we need to go for our own happiness. Yes. Yes, that yes. is the pivot. And when you're in flow. Yes. It feels good, as you said. It then has you're to happy. feel good, inner right? Yes. Right. Inner right. happiness mm. feels good. And mm -hmm. it's like the universe just opens for you. Yes. You're in the flow. Things suddenly fall together. People, places, and things yes. start happening yes. for you. It's easy. It's you're not, you know, you're not fighting it. We need to let go. Yeah. We really do. We're, we're always holding on so tightly. Yeah. And surrender. I always tell people, surrender right. it. Yes. And it doesn't mean you're surrendering your dream. It yeah. means you're surrendering the responsibility to do it on your own. Oh, Steph, thank that you so really much great. for coming thank on you. Wake Up. My thank God, you so thank much. you. It was thank such a pleasure. Thank you for letting pleasure. us have that, you know, the confidence to be able to do this. Thank That's you so right. much. Move past the fear into yes. the happiness. Yes. So thank you again, Steph. Thank you, it's thank my you. pleasure. When we come back, we meet Sir James Gray Robinson, CEO of Awakening Mastery. He shares with us about his five near-death experiences. Lastly, we share an amazing array of gifts for that special person in your life or just for yourself. Joining us now is Sir James Gray Robinson, CEO of Awakening Mastery. Welcome back to the show. Welcome Hello, James. ladies. So great to have you so here. Great. We're missing you here. Yeah, but look at that outfit you got on today for us. You're incredible. And I love that we yeah. are going to talk about near-death experiences. So can you share with us? I mean, you've had five. Can you share with those uh, what those experiences were like? Um, the first one was I was about eight or nine years old and I stepped on a, one of those r hose that have the pointed end to it. And the point went through my foot and the handle pivoted up and hit me between the eyes. And um, I was out mm -hmm. for quite a while. I had an out of body experience, but I still, uh, I don't know whether I was dead or alive, but I was looking down watching people trying to resuscitate me. They took me to the hospital and I came back and I had an experience at that time. Uh, the second time was I fell off a building when I was a college freshman, I was 18 years old uh, and, you know, cheated death on that one because I landed on a brick wall and oh my gosh. pretty much messed up my body. The third one was I was in a rugby accident, which, the Another player and I were running towards the ball. I got there first, looked up, and the top of his head hit me right in the nose, mm. shoved my septum back into the, my brain and uh, crushed it. So I didn't have a nose for a while, but I watched him trying to resuscitate me and all of that. The EMTs were very good. Again, I, on all of these, I had out-of-body experiences. Mm. The fourth one involved a um, military base I got on and – uh, was basically beaten to death. Mm. And the fourth, uh, fourth one was a, uh, I got bucked off a horse. I was a cattle rancher for 20 years and I trained the horses and I got bucked off, landed on my head and uh, had an out of body experience. James, you, the, Jay, James, you've had, you've had so many out of body experiences. What have you actually learned from all of these? If we understood what powerful, eternal, amazingly gifted people that we are, then we wouldn't fear death. It's kind of like you you take that out of your conscious mind because most people who have not experienced it are definitely afraid of it, to make a pun. But it's we usually spend all of our life running away from death and we forget to live and so the message i bring to people is that it's much more important to live the fullest life you can possibly live do stuff that reaffirms reaffirms the fact you're alive things like wearing bright colors 
and doing outrageous things and exploring your boundaries and being as creative as you can possibly be. And don't worry about what anybody else thinks of you Mm -hmm. because your life and you need to infuse into it as much fun as joy and excitement as you possibly can, because we can do anything. And the only thing that limits the only thing that limits is our mind. Yeah, absolutely, James. And you actually have a film that you're working on to help educate us more about this and also have so many people on there that have had near-death experiences Mm -hmm. themselves. So can you share with us about this film? Yes, it's called Beyond Physical Life. And it explores with people their near-death experience and how it changed their life. Because I know that when I had my experiences and I connected with what I call the divine, some people call it the soul. When you get your mind out of the way, you can experience life as it's really supposed to be. And these people have had extraordinary experiences. Some were hit by lightning, some were drowned, some had, you know, they were horribly catastrophic injuries, but they all came back. And the, there's a similar theme through all of them. And that is that they were not, it wasn't their time and that they needed to come back and start living their life as fully as they possibly can. Living their lives. And then they have a purpose, right? And a mission just like you, James. And you don't have to have a near death experience. You can learn and have the takeaways that these people. Exactly. And that's what you are teaching. thank Thank you so much for coming on wake up, James. We look forward to seeing you again. Well, thank you, ladies, and I really appreciate you letting us and others spread our messages and let people know that there is a lot more out there waiting for them. 100%. Thanks, James. Incredible. Important messages. Bye-bye, James. I love this part. Me too. So many great gifts. We have some amazing gifts to share with you. And first is jewelry from Shoreline Designs. It's a beautiful jewelry line inspired by the sea. Shoreline Designs is a line of fine, authentic sea glass. And it's all the jewelry that's made there. The sea glass in this bracelet and pendant is actually from Puerto Rico and Hawaii. All of the sea glass in designer Michelle Shore's creations is real and surf tumbled by the sea. Then bezeled and linked in sterling silver or 14 karat gold to create a unique one of a kind design. Michelle finds most of the sea glass herself on the beaches in the US and all over the world. And each piece of jewelry is one of a kind because each piece of real sea glass is unique. You can order at shorelinedesigns.shop. The next product is from Fizzy Magic. It's the Space Galaxy Box Collection. Look at that. Isn't that it's cool? so, so fun. cool? I mean, all of these things. And these planets, these space bombs, actually have surprises inside. So you see all of these surprises, these little items. They're yeah. so cute, right? Can you imagine fun. the kids it's in the back? The they they're a, playing they and it disintegrates, right? And then the little designs and surprise random items like space toys and bendable astronauts pop out like what kid wouldn't love that (laughs) the bath bombs are also educational with clues to guess the surprise inside it comes with bonus toys such as a squishy astronaut hello (laughs) and a high bounce Fancy ball. Love it. Love it. With spaceship inside. Please go to fizzymagic.com and order this amazing gift for anyone in your family, friend, or even your own kid. This one's a great one. It's a fun one, too. So excited to get to share about my book in honor of Alcohol Awareness Month. Chaos to Clarity, Seeing the Signs and Breaking the Cycles is my memoir. Uh, It's also a self-help book that paving a new path in recovery with an educational approach for the reader to learn how to see the signs and break the cycles in their own life. It is a guide for healing from your past, making amends in relationships, walking in faith, and creating your most fulfilling life. So please go to wakeupwithmarcy.com, amazon.com, It's also at Barnes & Noble, Walmart, and Target.com. So I poured my heart into this book. 
I'm and it eight. is so incredible. Thank you I so read much. It. I loved it. Yeah, so I'm eight and a half lessons. years sober. I've learned so very so much, and this is the gift of yeah. sobriety. And I teach Chaos you what I went through. I just appreciate yeah. being able to share really about it. And great. these are great all gifts. These, please go to yeah. wakeupwithmarcyandhillary.com for more information on all of these gifts. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I got to tell you, I love what Steph uh, Mahoney purpose. was saying. Purpose uh, over perfection. Yeah. And you know, mm -hmm. finding our happiness because I tell you, like even myself starting this journey of being a talk show host, mm -hmm. like I was like, who am I to do that? Right. right. But the seed was planted and it just felt good and all these things yeah. started And you just listened. Happening you heard it and you listened and you executed. Exactly. It. And that's what you always talk about tuning yeah. in and yeah. relaunching. You got it. So it's so important that we do that. So yes. listen, if you wanna hear more about our guests, watch the show again, go to wake up with Marcy and Hillary .com. Be kind to yourself and kind to others. And don't forget, wake up to all of your possibilities. See you next weekend. See you next time.